All right. Hey, good evening, guys. Uh, real quick here, you know, obviously we had big grades on uh, Tevin Jenkins. And, you know, as we got to that area of the draft, we felt, you know, fortunate to be able to, to get up and get him. You know, best player on our board, a premier position. Really felt like there'd be a run of offensive linemen in that area of the draft. You know, I think 17 players went from picks 37 to 53, and eight of those 17 were offensive linemen. So that, that was an area of the draft where those guys were coming off. You know, so, hey, we get a talented player. Uh, you know, it hits, a, it hits an important position for us, a valued position for us. You know, Tevin, you know, you go back at Oklahoma State, he played right tackle, he played left tackle, he's played both guard spots while, he's, while he was at Oklahoma State. You know, we feel his best fit is uh, either tackle spot for us. And really just describing the player for you guys, a powerful tackle. You know, he can bend, he can play with leverage. He consistently moves guys out in the run game. Uh, which is awesome to see. Um, beyond that, he's got the athletic ability to get to the second level and block in space. Uh, and pass pro, a really good anchor. So he handles power really well, really good anchor. And then, of course, you know, he plays with a lot of toughness and finish. You know, we went into this draft, you know, looking for that trait, and he definitely has that trait, that toughness, that nasty style of play. So uh, we're excited about this addition. Uh, we're excited about tomorrow. You know, we, we have four picks tomorrow, you know, early in the fifth and then three sixes. And, you know, we've had a lot of success in the fifth round over the years, and we want to continue that into the sixth round too. So uh, with that, I'll be happy to take, take any questions. First up, Brad Biggs, Chicago Tribune. Ryan, uh, you said he was the highest player on your board. What, what sort of set him apart from that cluster of uh, – other guys that could be potential tackles uh, that you could have gotten in round two? Yeah, for us, it was just the, the consensus grades. You know, we had, you know, we had first round grades on him, Brad, and it was just the consensus in our room. When I, when I looked at it, you know, I, all of us were on the same page. And um, it's a combination of just, just the well-roundedness, Brad, that he had, you know, his size, um, his ability to get movement in the run game. He's sturdy and pass pro. You know, we feel he can play both tackle spots, you know, with ease. Um, just the personality traits that he has. So it was just, it was kind of the complete package of him that made us feel really good about it. Adam Johns. Hey, Ryan, you mentioned his, his attitude. I, I guess in getting to know him, what kind of struck you about the way he, he talks about himself? Uh, I know he could use some colorful words, but like just the way he describes his play and, and like, how do you see that? come to fruition uh, and almost every snap there at Oklahoma State. Yeah, and that, that's the first part. You know, before um, before even getting to talk to him in person, Adam, just watching the tape, and you just watch the finish that he plays with, you know, and, the, um, and it's just awesome to see. And, again, that's something we, we want to continually add to our roster. Uh, and he does it on a regular basis, you know. And I think that improved for him throughout his collegiate career, too. Like when you watch from 19 to 20, even that, that trait. And uh, – but then – you start talking to him through this process uh, and you can just feel that with him as soon as you talk to him. I'm sure you guys felt it today. Um, and it's genuine, you know, some guys you know, talk that way, but they don't, they don't play that way. Um, he, he definitely plays that way. So um, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to see. Dan Wiederer. Ryan, had you guys stayed at 20 last night, was he in uh, the cloud of, of guys that would have been in consideration there? And then also when you look at, the success that Oklahoma State had running the ball in 2019 with Hubbard. Uh, I'm curious what uh, Tevin's influence on that was in, in, when you guys watched the film. For sure, Dan. He was, he, we, you know, he, we had first round grades on him. You know, who was in that cloud and who wasn't. I don't want to get into that, but we had first round grades on him. So that's why in the second round, uh, you know, and especially that position, that player, we wanted to make sure we, we, we got him. Um, in regards to their running success at Oklahoma State, and you know, obviously they've been a successful program. and He's um he's a big part of that. You know, the, the running lanes that he opens up on a regular basis is real. And I think what's cool is sometimes you see these these big linemen and they create movement at the point of attack on the line of scrimmage, but then they're limited in space. Like they might be stiff at the second level or they can't get downfield. Tevin can do both. So he can he can drive defensive linemen off the ball, but then he can also chip, release to the second level, and make a block in space on a linebacker, um, which is encouraging to see. Adam Hogue. 
Yeah, Ryan, uh, first, sorry if I missed this at the beginning. I mean, do you, do you view him as a right tackle or, I mean, what, I guess what's going to be the plan as you get him out there this off season? Yeah, that's, that's the great thing about him, Adam, is he's, he's played both guard spots and both tackle spots there. He's played more right tackle, um, but he played, you know, there's two games of a uh, starting tackle tape and uh, at left tackle in 2019, you go back and look, uh, I think it's Texas Tech and, and Baylor. He's at left tackle in both those games. So there's plenty of left tackle tape. So we feel that he can play both tackle positions and we just got to sort through that. And, and how did you handle um, what are, the, him opting out in the middle of the season? I know it's just a weird year with all those different, yeah. every individual case is different, but then I thought it was interesting tonight. Him also, we asked him about the senior ball and he basically just said his agent didn't want him to play in the game. So I mean, I guess, how did you handle sorting through all that? With yeah, him? I think, you know, that was happening a lot this year, you know, Adam, I think with a lot of guys we found. Um, so you're just kind of going through that process. And it's such a unique year as we, as we evaluate those decisions and respect those decisions. But what I thought was cool is, you know, his, his pro day was really good. You know, he showed up in great shape, was really good. Um, and this, the, the, all these things add up, you know, the amount of research we do and the amount of phone calls we make. And, you know, just coincidentally, we hired a, a strength coach uh, this year, Anthony Hibbert, uh, just a, about a month ago, who was at Oklahoma State the last four years. So, like, there's, there's so many different uh, things we find out about players, and every little bit helps. Kevin Fishbane. So Ryan, what's the process like when you have a first round grade on a guy and he's still there when you get to 39? Is there conversations in the room where you're kind of wondering why Tevin got there and then getting to that conviction point where you're able to make that trade up? Yeah, I think we just have confidence in our, you know, in our grades and our process and the conclusions that we came to, you know, before you get in the heat of the moment, you know, on, you know, on draft days. So we had talked about it um, this morning that if, that situation occurred along with a couple other situations. Um, that would be one of the few situations where we'd want to go up, you know, and especially for that position and, and who he was. So, you know, once it kind of got in that area and, you know, we were able to do that basically, you know, flip a three and a five basically, and, you know, in one of our four sixes, but essentially flip a three and a five. And for us, uh, it was worth it um, to make sure we got a guy that we had graded that high um, with all those traits at that position. So, we, uh, we were all pretty fired up about it. Pat Finley. Hey, Ryan, I, you, you keep saying that uh, that he could fit at left or right. Um, how do you see your offensive line shaking up right now? Obviously, Leno's been at left for a long time, uh, but it seems like you've got seven or eight bodies for five spots. Yeah, you know, Pat, the whole thing is, you know, we, we really, you know, as we talked through this and went into this draft, you know, we were we were hoping that it would fall a certain way where we could add talent to the draft room and or to the to the O line room. I'm sorry, and and wherever that was, you know, and and you know, it could be interior, it could be on the edges, and uh, we just want to add competition. We just want to add competition in the O line room. Uh, we know, although it starts up front there, uh, we haven't you know drafted you know high there in recent years. I know with with White Hair and James, and it's just such, such an important group for us. And uh, I think Juan Castillo does an unbelievable job developing these guys you know there's just certain coaches in the league that you know when you put a young player in the room you just have so much confidence that they're going to grow and develop and and Juan just has a long history of that so we're excited to put Tevin with Juan and watch Tevin grow under his guidance. Jason Leisure. Ryan when you consider the picks that you went in with and now you sit here after day two and you have fields and Jenkins is this the best you've ever felt about a draft? Yeah, you, you feel good. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure Jason, you know, every club tonight is feeling good, you know, that, but I think, you know, for us, the, the, the positions that they play, Jason, and like where we had them graded and the type of people that they are and, and the players that they are. And, and uh, yeah, we feel pretty good. We feel pretty good. I just, we're so locked in right now. I feel like tomorrow we got a lot of work ahead of us, you know, that those, those are going to be important picks. And like I said, I'm, you know, I was talking to Josh Lucas before I came down here. and I, I said, Josh, give, give me our fifth round picks again. And it's Amos and Jordan Howard and Blau Nichols and Travis and Bildor and Mooney. And, man, we got to keep that going. We got, we got this tradition of fifth round picks for nailing, Jason. We got to keep it rolling. And I'm excited about those, those sixes, too. And maybe we can move around tomorrow and do some, do some other damage. But, uh, and then, again, college free agency after the draft tomorrow is big. But to answer your question, Jason, we feel 
we feel really good right now. Uh, it's a good feeling in house. Jeff Dickerson. Ryan, from all the tape you watched on Tether, and I'm sure it was a, a massive amount of tape, were there one or two instances where you really saw that nasty streak that stuck out to you, like a guy that's not afraid to get his hands dirty? Yeah, we watched, we pretty much watched, you know, almost every game he played, you know, and uh, the one, and I, and I think that it's, it's pretty well documented is the Texas game, you know, and he, you know, he's blocking some good players uh, on the Texans front that are, that are, that one high in this draft, you know, and you just saw uh, the nastiness and the finish and the toughness that he played with in that game, uh, which was awesome to see. There's, there's a lot of moments when we're up here late at night and you're watching got watching guys and, you know, Hey, Josh, you got to get in here and see this. And you're tagging the play and, and it's just, it, it's cool to see, you know, and, um, he's, he was one of those guys when you're watching this tape, um, it doesn't always happen with offensive linemen, but you're kind of on the edge of your seat because he's, because he's burying guys like that. Alex Shapiro, NBC Sports Chicago. Hey, Ryan. Um, if there's one adjective you could use to describe both Tevin Jenkins and Josh Fields, it's probably really tough, tough guys. Is yeah. that you're specifically targeting when you're looking at prospects or it just kind of worked out that, you know what, we got two really tough guys or over the, the past two days. No, that's something we're stressing, Alex. It really is. You know what I mean? That, 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 that toughness in, in all areas of our team, it's been something we've talked about for a while now. I think that's a good observation by you. Um, it, they both possess it in t totally different positions and yet they both have that trait. Um, and so it's been something that, you know, I think, you know, we'll continually strive for it. I think we've definitely checked that box on those two players in this draft thus far. We have time for one more. Chris Emma. Ryan, when we spoke with Tevin, uh, he didn't really mince words saying that he felt he should have been a day one pick. Uh, what kind of things did he articulate to you after you guys picked him about kind of, did he say anything in terms of those feelings or is, uh, kind of express his self-confidence? Yeah, you know, I think too, it, once things settle down for him and I think he's just, just excited. All these guys the last couple of months have just been so crazy for them. And I think now they can just exhale and know where they're going to be, you know, and he just, that's the kind of feeling I got from him is I'm glad things worked out this way. You know, I'm sure he was frustrated that he fell as far as he did, but now he can exhale um, and say, Hey, I know where I'm going to be. It's all, it was all meant to be. And just, I could, just, what I felt from him, Chris, was just the excitement for him to be a Chicago bear. I know him and Juan have talked a lot, you know, him and Matt have talked a lot. And I just feel like, you know, I feel like he was hoping that he would end up here um, and, uh, and we made it happen. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, guys.